just like a seed, but you're never quite a flower. You feel more just like a weed. Hello, everybody. Um, Me too. Hello, comment everybody. Oh, Erica, we can hear you. <laughs> um, that is the captioner. It's her name is Erica. She's awesome. Everybody say hi to Erica because we love her. She's here every single week. She makes time for these concerts. So, um, my name is Galen Lee, and I am a musician from Duluth, Minnesota. And you are at um, first. Before I say anything else, I want to say happy birthday to Tina McKee because she had a birthday yesterday, and she has been to basically every show. But I've done like 50 of them now, I think. So happy birthday to Tina. And I am excited to welcome Rebecca Birchfield here from Toledo, Ohio. And her husband, Will, um, she plays as a group called Keen Garrity. And she just released a new album. So Rebecca, want to introduce yourself to people who may not know a ton about your music yet or what you're up to or what you do outside of music, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> all that good stuff. Just everything. So Thank you so much for inviting me to be on the show for those of you who don't know me, which is everyone, but that's fine. Oh, actually, that's not true. Like my sister and her friends and some friends are tuning in. So like my sister knows me, but the rest of y'all don't. <laughs> If you don't, if you don't know me, um, I am Rebecca, but I make music as Keen Garrity, and um, I just released my first album after like a whole lot of adulthood hemming and hawing, and I'm really, really proud of it. And it's what I call storybook pop rock, and it's called Get Big. So it's it's out there now, and uh, yeah, I, it was kind of a quarantine project, but then also it took a little bit longer. It's not like it was just a 2020 project, but it's something I've been kind of working on for a while. And um, it came out a week ago, basically, and I'm super proud of it. And I am so, so glad that you have me on here and you're sharing me with all of your nice people who um, are on your stream. Uh, and I hope, yeah, like I hope somebody hears something that they like or resonates with them. And I just hope to make some connections and chat with some nice folks today. So yay. In search of nice folks, right? Yes, perpetually. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wait, so so your first album, does this mean that you played out a lot? Or are you like one of those artists that works mostly at home? Like, do you do a lot of shows? So, like... Well, okay, not so during quarantine, I assume. Uh, right. So back in the 80s, we had like a cool dude, like progressive rock play at bars band. But I mean, I haven't gotten the opportunity to play live in a really long time you know so this was completely like a home project it's not how i want to be always because obviously when when covid has decided to stop coveting us <laughs> <laughs> all of this time i'm i'm really excited to get a band together again um and uh do that do all of that again but yeah this has been like a solitary in my office, in my house, the same place where I have Zoom calls doing my web developing job. <laughs> yeah, yep. That's awesome. Well, I love the name. What Can you tell us a little bit about the name Get Big uh, and what it means to you? Because I think it's something that you could kind of translate to anyone, but I'm just curious what made you name it that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like the album in a bunch of different ways is about different a lot of them are creatures or characters, but they're all in different ways um, undergoing some sort of process or transition where they're becoming bigger than what they are. And so in, in some cases, it's like, um, you know, if you as a person are like really super hurt or feel very vulnerable or feel very afraid, you know, rather than cower in fear, a, a better thing to do sometimes is just to flare yourself up, right? Like, just like, you know, like make yourself. Fish. Yeah, like a puffer fish. Exactly. Like, and get big. It's a, it's a, like, I don't want to say a defense mechanism because that makes it sound like it's a pathology or a bad thing. But sometimes when you're faced with just overwhelming, you know, feeling of being made to feel small, sometimes you just have to pretend like you're bigger than you are. And so all of the songs in one way or another, thematically or about that that's so cool. um, just different people experiencing that same phenomenon yeah so cool well somebody named ryan is here with his seven-year-old daughter in winnipeg manitoba in canada and so i it's cool that you wrote like a storybook can you play us the first song um i'm so excited to hear it and then we'll come back and chat when we're done but i'll get out of the screen and let no. you in, do you want to introduce it for us and then we'll hear it sure. 
This is actually the album entered. This is called Statuesque. And um, again, it, it goes back to that theme of just what happens when you are um, having to stand in front of everyone and basically just say, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I'm doing. And uh, um, to be unafraid of being yourself and standing in your own personhood, I guess. That's what the song is about. So, Statuesque. It's gonna be so lovely The features will be rendered On the earth to touch the sky It's gonna look just like me I will not take it lightly Be still for the sculptor And get all my good sides ooh, ooh, ooh. They're gonna build a statue of me It's gonna be so lovely All the lines and preface Just according to a guide It's gonna look just like me I will not take it lightly Every facet of my being Greatly magnified And all the things within my makeup All my failures, sins, and shakers Will be placed in a compartment And in the underside Awesome. Um, 
So people yeah. are saying it's like a country western vibe. I like it. Like a like an uh, old western film. Is that kind of what the vibe was about? Yeah, absolutely. There, it's really funny because I didn't set out to make it sound country western, but then it kind of kept creeping in, and that was one where we just de- well, I said we just decided because this was obviously a very guitar centric song. Yeah. Um, like I, I was like, you know what? I want to sound like when the album ends that we're just going to ride off into the sunset and all feel better about ourselves, right? Like, yeah. we're going to go with your newfound confidence and all of the things that you've kind of gone through on this journey. And then just imagine that that nice moment where you just decide, okay, well, here I am, world, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna live in it. So yeah, that's cool. That's really fun. People enjoyed that a lot. So when you're when you're done at the interview part, when you leave, um, you should go check out the YouTube comments because they're pretty sweet before Aww, before the show ends. Um, really fun. So cool. Well, so then that one is about like a, a statue, the story of a, a guy getting a statue built of him or a woman yeah, with their a companion. Wa- That's really, really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I, I thought that that just felt like a really appropriate metaphor for... Um, you know, like, I think we all kind of go through our lives feeling like, okay, one day I'm going to be like the version of me that does everything right. Like, I'm going to be the version of me <laughs> that wakes up on time and oh my gosh. No. like I'm supposed to or, you know, eats healthy and I have my good habits and I'm going to just, I'm going to be perfect and I'm going to dress cute. And like, you always feel like you've got this version of you out there somewhere but then the reality is every day you're making yourself with your, I mean, like you're already out there in the world and you're already a being and you're already good enough as you are. And I just like using the metaphor of someone building a statue of you because like, whether you want it to be true or not, we're just already out there and yeah. you've got to, you know, you have to just kind of like, okay, here's me. And whether this is the best version, this is the statue that's already being built. So that's we got to cool. just, I love ride. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really fun. Cause I actually, this month, I really am trying to be like, I started in January trying to continue to set some new habits, but it's a good way to look at it. But like, regardless there's not like an end goal you're building the statue right now it's not like right. in 30 years you'll suddenly be a different person it starts, <laughs> right. starts it's today like, and continues what, onward what, right I drink eight glasses of water a day or whatever it is like then i'm gonna be yeah. the person like yeah no. nope nope that's not how it works oh that's, that's cool. not so so i wanted to let people know so i um, was introduced to Rebecca through my roommate in college, uh, Lauren Chestnut. She's going to be a guest on the show this summer, um, later on, maybe even September, I don't know. But she's hilarious. Do you, and you met her through Isaac, and you guys all were studying American culture? American culture studies, Yeah, yes. so what is that exactly? So, okay, it's actually like the way that it got to be a department was a bunch of academic bureaucracy because it was kind of a combination between British cultural studies where you study society and you study themes and culture and you deconstruct them. And then like American studies where you study literature. So they just kind of like squashed all the departments together because of budget cuts. And then it's (laughs) it's just like critical cultural studies kind of a deal. Okay. But yeah, um, it's it's so funny. I was very, very, very uh, glad that Lauren, let me so graciously like she was like hey rebecca i know (laughs) this thing if you want to get in here and i'm like really lauren it was super nice so yeah i had it in but yeah um yeah did you did you also write about energy drinks (laughs) <laughs> that's the beauty of american culture studies you can write about whatever garbage you want to. <laughs> so what did you do what was your main focus oh that is funny that was that was lauren's master's thesis was yes it, not? it was yes i wrote about actually sound recordings archives like that was my deal like my area of study and um just uh um you know a little bit about archival practice but also just stuff about um I don't know, like music tangibility and um, how it impacts our uh, experience with music and and what it means when music is tangible or not tangible. So it was a bunch of it was a bunch of academic nonsense like that, but it was good <laughs> stuff. Like, you know, it, it was fun. Like I about know. making sure that the music of your culture is not making sure, but 
exploring what it what it means when it gets recorded basically like when you can listen to it in the original then, form or i this might be too deep for this i'm not sure try to explain <laughs> it in the most simple of terms i was gonna say you guys are free to check out my dissertation <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> And it's but, but just stuff like, you know, how does um, the way that we record music, um, how does it affect our experience with it, especially as consumers of it, right? Like, um, if, you know, you know, a lot of people out there are like vinyl enthusiasts, and they love that experience of touching the record, and um, hearing the crackles and pops and hearing all the imperfections. And that's like a really big part of the experience to them, right? Like they don't want to just hear something through Apple music on their pristine earbuds, right? Like, they, <laughs> you know, like they want that, that uh, physical artifact. And, um, and so it was a lot of stuff like that and a little bit to do with, you, you know, what does that mean for preservation of music? And then how will we preserve things in the, in the digital future when a lot of people aren't doing tangible mediums? Yeah, that yeah. is going to be weird. I mean, we're all yeah. we're all kind of grappling with that. Like the last two releases I did were just digital right now. But when I go back on the road, I'll probably press, like, or not press, make CDs. But I always do wonder, like, is it worth making those vinyls? Because they are so expensive. I don't know if you've done a lot of vinyl, but they are not cheap. Um, but but they people are. do like them. Uh, like they like to hold the album. And I loved. We used to have a record player, and it was so fun to hear it in a. I don't know why it's different, but it totally is definitely different to have it playing on a record player. Yeah, I mean, it's the, pretty cool. The whole experience is different, and yes, they are expensive. I did get some records pressed for Get Big, so I'm very excited Ooh, about it. Cool. And they, I got the notice like they're gonna get shipped to me like any day now, so I'm super excited. But like, That's yeah, awesome. it is. It is like there is nothing like I mean, you can sell, I guess, some digital downloads and we're all very fortunate when someone chooses to support us in that way. Right. But then there's something so like immediate about somebody saying, yes, I want this physical artifact like of yours in my home and I want to like keep it and cherish it. Like that just seems very special. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in a way. No, it so. is. It is. So Lauren is here and she said she's a Will Malone super fan. Low-key <laughs> low key guitar awesomeness and supportive music husband vibes. So, Will, you are appreciated in this moment, just so you know. Um, <laughs> that's cool. So, I, I'm excited for people to meet Lauren eventually, too. She's hilarious. She does a lot of oh, yeah. comedy. And you do a lot of podcasts, right? Yeah, we I, actually... We do have a podcast. It's just like there's always nonsense going on in this house, you know. It's always some kind of nonsense. But yeah, no, we have uh, two podcasts like that. They don't go simultaneously all the time because we're not robots. That would be crazy. But um, we have a, a podcast that's like a pop culture archetype podcast called TWN Champions, where like every week we pick pick a theme and then we'll do a, a countdown like last week we did bards like the our favorite bards across media okay or our favorite, you know warriors or wizards or, or whatever and um that's kind of a fun one and then we also do a scripted comedy podcast called curdle holler which is about a halloween afterlife town so <laughs> that's out there too. Um, but yeah, it's a, there's a whole lot of just, just nonsense and recording going on in this home at all times. So. That's fun. I mean, and has that made the last year easier to bear, do you think, in a way, like having something to work on? So much. Like, I, I know some of us are really like this where you just bury yourself into work or a project, right? Because it's just so much easier than, I don't know, doing the doom scroll like oh yeah i like, yep yep you know um i i find that throwing myself into a creative project is feels like the most productive thing i can do because yeah. even if it's kind of uncomfortable to sit there and make yourself work on something i'm like well it's more uncomfortable to sit here and doom scroll so i think i'd rather use my time productively. yeah no it's true i mean i i went off of social media in November and I'm debating if I will ever go back. I mean, I love YouTube and I really like Patreon. Well, I love Patreon too. They're both just really authentic ways. And then I do a newsletter. So I'm like, you know, if people really want to keep up, they, they can. But I don't know if I personally feel like I get any. I mean, I, I like connecting with people, but I found other ways to. And the right. social media part of it 
is I personally don't feel like it's good for me. So I'm I'm kind of in the middle of being like, I was going to go back on in April, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to. I got to admit, like, I don't miss it really. And, I, and I, I'm still connecting with people, which makes it feel like, well, maybe I'm getting what I need out of social media without having to go on there, which is kind of, I don't know, it's an interesting world. But musicians think they need it. And I mean, I, I bought that too. And I'm not sure if I believe it anymore. I'm not, I just don't know. I'm so not <laughs> sure. I like hearing you say that though, because I, you really do kind of get the feeling when you start putting stuff out there in the music landscape, you kind of get the feeling that if you're not everywhere all the time, that you're somehow failing, mm-hmm. you know, to promote yourself properly. And I just, I, I have to believe that it's more important to make connections in smaller, more meaningful ways, because, you know, I'm not going to go flail my arms on TikTok and try to start a new craze. <laughs> I know. I have not even dared to download TikTok. I'm just not. Nope. I'm, I guess I'm old. I'm 37. I don't feel old. I don't think I'm old, but I must say, I'm like, nope, so I don't I think I can old. go there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just, you know, and I'm just like, I, I understand that these are all really valuable tools for different people. And yeah, different- exactly will reach different ways but yeah for me too like I, I feel and I'm just starting out like I know you have like a really sizable and impressive platform and like it makes me feel good to hear that you're saying that you know I, I don't know that I need to be everywhere because it it does get overwhelming you know yeah I mean not to get too nerdy because I want to hear another song soon but what I think I'm going to do is keep my profiles like technically alive by every month or two months or maybe even three months just say hey, I'm still making music over here. Come find me. And then, you know, because I understand that people like to tag tag the artists that they have in interviews and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's important to have the existence of the page, but to constantly be updating it, I would spend a lot of time every week. And it's not that in itself isn't bad because you connect with people, but I wasn't doing as much of the other stuff that I wanted to be doing, like writing or or doing Patreon, which I think is really valuable. Like I really like get a lot out of that. So I, I was like, you know, if I spent less time here and just have a kind of a dummy page where people can find it, but then they go look for my active stuff other mm-hmm. places. I think that's my plan. Cause I think if you straight up delete it, you could be doing yourself a disservice, unfortunately. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, I don't know. And not that we have to go to, oh yeah, they're saying I'm not old. Woo-woo. Okay, that's good. Well, let's hear another song from you. Do you want to introduce this one while I get out of the screen? Sure, yeah. Um, so this one is called uh, Walkabout, and um, it's a two-part song, and I like to think of this as the Disney villain song because this is a song about a creature who's being made out of feelings of resentment, and then the creature gets to roam free. And, um, yeah, it, it's just kind of like what happens when all of the bad thoughts that you have um, arguing or, uh, feeling, you know, like whether it's a significant other or even like a sibling or a close friend, what happens when you start to let resentment take over? Although it's in a very campy, cartoony, fun kind of way. So I'd like to imagine this is like what an Oogie Boogie or Ursula type figure would like to prance on the piano and sing. Uh, so <laughs> with that as the introduction. Awesome. Here we go. Walk about, so. <clears throat> Be still. Did you feel the tiny sign scraping the sinew? Escaping its vessel 
like a doctor. yourself is that when you need to move from the piano to somewhere else <laughs> want to play you off right oh like, yeah good point yes you need you need yeah. to hire a second person to just do yes. that when you're coming over yes no that was yeah. awesome i could see you yeah. doing like um like disney movie soundtracks have you thought about writing for film like cartoons especially <laughs> i mean not that 
Not that I'm sure you haven't thought of other stuff, but that is, you really do have like a great way of storytelling through Well, thank you. Music. Thank you very yeah. much. That's very kind of you. Like, no, that's actually a real bucket list thing. And like, whether it's composing for a film or composing for television even, like, oh, yeah. I would love to write like a good theme song for a, a HBO drama about oh, like an gosh. old time railroad or something. Yep. <laughs> like oh my gosh, I can see it. I hope you do someday. I don't know how yeah. people go about just randomly acquiring a theme song assignment, but um, you know right? people. You know people in American culture studies. They've exactly. got to be somebody. Somebody's in charge of theme songs. They're gonna. They gotta have. They have to hook me up somehow. Yes. But I, I would. I, I do love that. I love. I, I don't know about you, but I also just love like theme songs in general. Like I love wrestling theme songs and just commercial jingles. I love all of that stuff. <laughs> see, we. I, love, I don't have the same passion for it, but I can see why people who can write like that, like really, like that is super cool. So I, yeah, loved that one and the concept of creating something in your mind that ends up kind of being real like out of negative thought that's actually like a older idea in some faith traditions where you like create a thing like a like not a not an actual demon but the idea becomes an actual thing that takes like shape so try like when you think ill of other people for example um right. and you send this you project it's a projection of this negative energy it becomes real even if you misinterpreted the person's action. So I think it's a cool concept as a song anyways, like besides it being super fun and catchy for sure. So <laughs> yeah, yeah the, it's a real, it's a real oogie boogie kind of song. Like that's who I kept thinking of, of like of his big grandstanding song. But yeah, no, it, it's absolutely, a, I, I think it is a truth that um, you have to, corral your thoughts like you have to be so diligent about corralling your thoughts and feelings because left untethered they will spiral and you will make a monster for lack of a better word you know yeah. it's, it's it's definitely a thing i think even, even if you don't struggle with it to the degree of uh, creating an actual monster that then stampedes across the old west like yes, in my exactly home. yes <laughs> not everybody just does that not everybody does that. So other people's monsters just like, I don't know, they get in the car and they go to Burger King and just order one of everything. I don't know. I don't know like what you like what other monsters do, but whether or not like your bad feelings manifest to that degree, it's still absolutely a thing, right? Like you yeah. have to be so careful about the thoughts you choose to hold. And I'm not yeah. one of those really sunny people like you gotta be positive all the time. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's important to try to keep yourself I kind of like to think of life as got bad and good at the same time and if you're only focusing on the negative you're missing half the story but you also don't need to be like never thinking about the negative it's just about keeping yourself in the middle lane kind of right like uh, like yeah, uh, that more way or less the full the full breadth of the picture around you like yeah totally I get yeah it. well I'm excited for people to hear your last song but I have two Small questions before we get to it. The first question is somebody wants to know very specifically how long the chain on your necklace is. Did you make it because they wanted to learn how to make a double ring, like how oh, you wrap it around twice? This is like the simplest trick in the world. I'll, I'll even show you. This is literally just like a super long uh, piece of leather. Um, okay. That I that yes, I just like doubled it, right? Like, so you just uh, tie it around. This is a great, fun question. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, I, that's why I love doing these shows live because people come up with stuff I would not even think uh, to ask. Right. right? And then, yeah, so, yeah. That's so like, good. So, so just like twenty-four like, inches or something, or yeah, just okay. if you just cut it to longer than a standard necklace. I love Will's back here snickering because this <laughs> is like so. It's like oh, necklace talk. It's just yes. Crazy. That's, but um it's called statement jewelry st <laughs> yep that's a yeah. statement um, piece indeed it's true that's cool and then the last question before we do your last song is um and first of all Vernoth, thank you for coming he's in india he comes every week which is pretty cool um but he, it's like monday night there i think so they're going to bed right now um so the last question is do you have any british like punk influences or what is your your like main musical influence um and then i was wondering if it's something like nico case or, or like who do you listen to a lot 
You know, that is that is interesting that you that uh, you would pick up on the uh, the British or punk kind of influences, because I do actually listen to a lot of heavier music like I really, really do like um, it is. It is funny that I think that sometimes the music that comes out of you is not necessarily the music that you like to rock out to. But that's not a bad thing, you know, yeah. um, I, I listen to a lot of like stoner metal and like you know like rock <laughs> and heavy metal and like progressive metal and, really uh, that's awesome yeah like <laughs> opeth and mastodon and and people like that and like just showy sort of like i do like heavier music right but Whoa. it's fascinating because when you sit down and write something you know i guess i could write a progressive metal jam about the same concept even but like you know it's it's not it's not the music that comes out of you right like yeah no, like we all have our own instruments and and uh what we listen to and then what we play just turns out to be a little bit different so um I yeah agree. but i also love i do love like older country music especially like um it's, it's hard to be a playing half western stuff and then not have that somewhere in your background but yeah, yeah. i do love old country and um uh, uh one of my i mean yeah i just know all the rock greats and and stuff like that so surprisingly i don't listen to a lot of music that sounds like the music that i play yeah and that's that's cool though because i so my songs are like pretty emotional like folky sad i don't know how to explain them and they're but, lovely too oh, well thank you but um but i but the thing is is i listen to like not really that kind of music in my own life as much um and so when the first time somebody met me once and they're like wow i thought you'd be a lot like less out oh, cheery than you are <laughs> and i was like oh yeah I, I guess it's just you know your music yeah your music does come from a different spot from what you put in i do think there's something else that happens before you write it's not just like, oh, I heard this once. Now I'm going to reproduce it. In you know, there is a big gap sometimes. So I would not have suspected you as a metalhead. So good job. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, it, it is interesting too. Like I like in um, I do. Uh, I I think the, your songs. So you know, from what I've heard, you know, they have this really, really nice old-fashioned quality to them and like there's a lot of sense of longing and you know that that i hear that i pick up on and it is funny that you say like you know that you know when you meet me i'm not like gazing wistfully out of a window and, and sighing and <laughs> at you know like all of my like 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 love's loss and lamenting or whatever like you're not that's not who you are just when you talk to people, but that just might be the flavor of the the music that comes out of you. And I just think that's so interesting because I know these are kind of showy or more fun songs, but I, I get pretty emotional in some of my songs too. And that's not, it's funny because I am a pretty cheery, funny kind of person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's just stuff that fascinates me though. You know, like it's, I, I think that's so interesting that you don't necessarily make music that is exactly reflective of your mood all the time it's just kind of like it, it's a, it comes from a different place like you said yeah i really do think it does well i i am very very glad you could join us today um and i want to hear your last song so i'm gonna have you do that so that we still have time to do yeah. it um what is your last song i'll let you introduce it while i get off screen sure. And I'm going to, sorry, just push this back a little bit. I am so sorry, everyone. That is just like so grating, I'm sure. So my last song is a commentary on the gig economy in that it's about grave robbing, but in a fun way. So The <laughs> ultimate gig. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, William. You, you'll have to get that one started if you don't mind. I'm sorry. But this one's called Gold Digger. And um, yeah, again, this is a this is a character song. This is not about my personal life. Just want to clear that up before we get started. Good idea. There you go. <laughs> and it's the one that it's not the one that MH. It's the three. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> Till the chisel cracks and the crowbar cries Wild winged witnesses scatter to the wind and disappear in the night Approaching the crypt with the sylph 
of speed. I'm a rebel, a thief, a fast dying breed. I'm looking for bubbles beneath these bones, but don't you dare call me greed. Cause it's hard to be a ghoul these days in drastic times call for dust pick measures. Though it's hard when you've got bills to pay in a world of goblins hoarding treasures. I'm gonna go out, my pile of gold is gonna grow bigger without a doubt. I enjoy being a gold digger. I wasn't born suckling a silver spoon, so I found my own metal by the light of the moon. And Remorse when his things were so neatly discarded. I'll keep hit till I strike lit and I'll never turn back. Cause the pay dirt's too good and I look too good in black. And as long as there's breath in this body, I say I will keep slinking. So that one goes out to anybody who's forced to uh, to take to take gigs right now to get by. I know that is not freaking easy. So, yeah. well, that is hopefully not anyone watching has to go that far. But I agree, it is. <laughs> yeah, no, that is awesome. I really loved that. And the so you guys, if you want to get her album, it is at keengarity.com. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. There, uh, there's a link for a digital download there if you'd like to support me in that way. And then there's links to stream it everywhere. So any platform that you're on, you can find a link there. You should definitely be pitching that to like Netflix because I'm sure they're coming up with a Gold Digger like, series. <laughs> and there has to be something. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much. And Will, the husband, nice to meet you uh, back there. Thanks for being on the show. And Rebecca, um, I hope people can check out your music. The album is on sale now, correct? Correct. It is, it okay. is out there. And there's yeah. vinyl, I hear. And there is vinyl. It's still in pre-order, but it's coming really, really soon. So, and yeah. you would ship to Liverpool in the UK? Yes, I will. Okay, I will cool. Just checking. Uh, okay, well, thank you for being here, and good luck with the new album. I hope you get to play tons of gigs as soon as the world opens up again um, exactly. and that your album does awesome, and I hope I meet you in person someday. Yes, absolutely, and thank you so much for doing this because this is a really cool forum, and I'm sure that everybody who comes on here feels the same way, but I just, I'm really... I think it's reconnected. Okay, we're connected. We're back. Okay, I'm going to play a couple tunes for you before, um, one second, I'm going to fix something actually. Oh, she's still there. <laughs> oh, Rebecca, if you want to sign out, that way uh, it will show up, not on my screen. Okay, there we go, I think. Getting everything set up. Okay, one second, it's poor little guys, I, I know what it is. I had the wrong setting on. Okay, there we go. Here we are. I'll have you maybe move the 
mic up for hello. Could you do me a favor, actually? Um, and press um, the... Oh, actually, here, I'll just do it. Sorry. Who are you guys? It'll just take a sec. Um, let's see how this... Okie doke, promise, gonna do a song. There we go. Sweet. Ron, Ron wants to see the bunny. I don't know if we can do it. He would destroy us. I will find a way sometime. Maybe the next show, I'll put his cage over here. We can roll him over so I can show him on screen without letting him out of his cage. Because he will just eat everything so um like immediately <laughs> he's a cool a cord destroyer that's his gig job oh my gosh so ron i'm gonna try to remember to have him on next week in his cage because i think we could do that that's feasible um okay so i'm gonna do two songs for you today um thank you so much for coming and to watching keen garrity remember that any tips that you can leave today will be split with her uh, with Rebecca slash King Garrity. Um, go get her album if you can. Um, subscribe to her YouTube. There's a bunch of great ways to get in touch. Um, this song is called Lost in the Woods. I need the volume. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry, guys. I have to turn my amp on so I can hear my loop. At noon. Sweet. So. When you were lost in the woods, you were misunderstood by everyone, everyone. You were searching for words, but they came out absurd. And no one heard you, no one heard you speak your mind. They lost the time. Where's your heart? Where's your heart today? Forgive yourself, but don't give yourself away. Getting farther from home and everywhere, everywhere you see hurting and strife. People cling to your light, but no one sees you, no one sees you keep your wife all alive. Where's your heart? Where's your heart today? Forgive yourself, but don't give yourself away, away, away. For 
away, give yourself, but don't give yourself away, away. There you go. Um, that is Lost in the Woods. Um, it's kind of, if, if I was going to compare anything that I wrote to kind of the stuff that Keen Garrity was doing, I think it would be that song um, in the music video. I'm wearing like a pink wig and it's very poppy, probably the poppiest of the pop songs I've written. Um, but to loop it, I had to really pare it down because there's a ton of chord changes and there's really only two notes, A and E, that go all the way through that like don't clash. So it's a different kind of loop song, but it's fun to try. So the next one I'm going to do um, is called Moment of Bliss. But before I play it, I just want to say um, thank you so much to Sean Anderson, who is sponsoring this uh, show on Patreon. She's at the sponsorship level, uh, shooting star sponsor. Um, and next week, I'm going to be announcing another sponsor. So there's a second one um, that just is getting started um, next week. So um, it's been really fun to kind of expand the show. And just so you know, if you have like a business or a charity that's hoping to sponsor something like this, um, the things that it will help pay for is captioning, of course, and also um, paying the guests like a set fee. Right now, we just split the tips, as you've seen. Um, and that works pretty well, actually, because you guys are awesomely generous, which is pretty cool. Um, but it would be nice to be able to say, hey, here's a set fee that I can pay you for the show. So things like sponsorships will help cover that eventually. And then just keeping us alive. So um, in the age of not touring, um, this is basically replacing touring. So um, that is that. And the song I'm going to end is called Moment of Bliss. And it is a song I wrote about marriage. Um, but it's actually just about all relationships, I think, uh, you could put it, uh, kind of apply it to that in your life, any close relationships. So here we go. This is Moment of Bliss. Thanks for listening.
But it's so hard to do Feels too empty when we're facing the truth Facing the truth All we need to know Lies at the end of our dress We won't choose to go So we just face the next Task, humble at last Ever simple But we so often miss All our chaos Can be pared down to this Pared down to this Pared down to this Moment There you go. Um, that is Moment of Bliss. Um, that's on my 2018 album, Learning How to Stay. But I actually wrote it uh, back when I was playing with Alan Sparhawk uh, a lot of the band Low. And so it's uh, a song that we would play as a duet. <clears throat> and it took me a while to figure out how to loop that one, too. Because, um, again, there's chord changes that don't always remain constant. But I figured it out. So next week, I'm excited for you guys to meet Layla Royale, and we're actually going to talk about looping a little bit because she started looping with a cello, um, and I feel like I don't really ever explain what's going on down there uh, with the looping pedal, but um, you'll get to learn a little bit more next week, um, and then she'll play you some of her music and tell some stories. I met her in the band Pig Face, um, so she's another Pig Face person, um, but she does some really cool cello stuff. So um, I just want to say thank you so much. It means a lot that you're here every week. Thank you to Keen Garrity. Um, please tip generously if you are able to so I can split them with her. Um, thank you to the captioner, Erica, and thanks to Sean Anderson for sponsoring and all of you, um, Patreon team, YouTube audience. I just really appreciate these shows. So thank you for making them work, uh, make them make sense. So have a great week. See you next week, um, and I will bring the bunny out, not out. I will put him in his cage, but you'll be able to see him next week. So take care. <laughs>